Hello and welcome. This is Kendra and it's time for a new quarterly card making challenge, Kendra's card challenge number 11. Now, if you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you can create a bunch of cards using just six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper with little to no scraps. It's like a one sheet wonder times six. For this challenge, you can create 15 A2 size cards. You can have a chance to win a lot of prizes by sharing your creations throughout the quarter. And this challenge runs from July 1st to September 30th of 2023. Now for this quarter, there are 20 company prize sponsors with over $1,000 worth of prizes that will be given away throughout this challenge. I'll share details on the prizes and how to enter the challenge in just a bit. But to sum up the challenge, you would use the cutting templates and card sketches that are provided in the free PDF printable that is available for download on my website, kendrascardchallenges.com. You'll want to pick out six coordinating pattern papers and assign them to each of the color coded papers A through F on the printable. This can be either six inch by six inch paper or 12 by 12 paper that's cut down. Then you will cut the papers using the cutting templates and sort the pieces for each of the 15 card sketches. You'll also need some matching colored cardstock for the layers and the card bases. And then you can decorate the cards with whatever stamps, dies, ephemera, or embellishments that you'd like following these sketches. This challenge is a great way to use up those paper pads and get a set of coordinating cards in the process. The first page of the printable shows the cutting guides for the first two sheets of pattern paper. The pink and yellow are labeled as paper A and B. All of the measurements are listed for each piece and there are scissors on each cutting guide to show which part of the paper needs to be cut first. There are circled numbers on each piece which indicates which card sketch the piece goes with. The dark gray and diagonal stripe pieces are scraps. There's also arrows on each piece to show the direction of how it will be placed on each of the card sketches. And for this challenge, you'll notice that the arrows do not go the same direction. So that means you'll want to use patterns that are non-directional, meaning it doesn't matter which way you turn the paper. If you want to use patterns that need to go a certain direction, then you'll want to pay attention to those arrows. You may have to rotate the card sketch. But I would recommend that you pick non-directional patterns for this particular challenge just to make it a little easier. The third and fourth sheets of pattern paper, which are purple and pink, are labeled as paper C and D. And you'll see there's a half circle on paper D. So you'll need a circle punch, die, or cutter if you decide to use this optional piece for card sketch four. And then the fifth and sixth sheets are orange and green, and those are labeled as papers E and F. Now here are the card sketches. There's a total of 15 cards for this challenge, and this page shows the first six. Since everything is color coded, it makes it easy to see what goes where, but everything that's gray, black, or white, you can use white or colored cardstock or even additional sheets of pattern paper if you'd like. Card sketch one shows a piece from paper A with two tags on top with the bottom tag coming from paper B. You can add a focal image or a sentiment or both on the top of the tag. Now sketch two has two squares from paper A and two squares from paper B. You can use an embossed or stenciled layer to go behind the diamonds. Sketch three uses two pieces from paper A cut into banners and one piece from paper B. This sketch has a lot of layers, but remember you can change it up and you don't have to follow the sketches exactly as they're shown. You can add a sentiment on the circle piece or a focal image in the circle and add a sentiment on the three quarter inch strip. And then sketch four uses a large piece from paper C for the back panel and pieces from papers A and B for the banners hanging from underneath the circle. The bottom half of the inner circle is that optional piece from paper D. Now sketch five has strips from papers A through E. And sketch six has a strip across the top from paper F and banners from papers A through E. You can place an image in the free space to the right of the banners or put a sentiment there or put the sentiment across the strip at the top. This page on the printable includes a QR code that you can scan with the camera on your phone, which will take you directly to the Facebook group where you can post your photo of all 15 cards to enter the challenge. Now, if you're not a member of the KCC Facebook group, you will need to agree to some group rules before you'll be approved to join. The next sheet shows sketches seven through 12. Sketch seven has three quarter inch strips along the edge of a square piece attached at an angle with two of the strips being from paper A and B. 
For this angled square, the sketch states to use an embossed, stenciled, or printed square. And once you attach this square to the card base at an angle, you're going to trim off the excess that will be hanging off the two sides. The video that I'll be posting soon will show exactly how to do this if it's not clear. But where the flower is on the sketch, you can use any shape. Now sketch eight has four rectangle pieces, one from papers B, D, E, and F. You'll notice two different shades of each color on the rectangles, which means you'll fold the corners back from the centers of each rectangle to reveal the other side of the paper. This works best with two-sided papers, but if you're using one-sided papers, you don't have to fold the papers back. Just place the circle on top in the center. Now for sketch nine, this calls for two strips from paper D and two from paper B, and they are framing a center rectangle where you can place your focal image and sentiment. Sketch 10 has two small strips, one from paper B and the other from paper D. Sketch 11 calls for two strips from paper C and E and a square from paper D. And then sketch 12 uses paper C, E, and F directly on the card base. This one does not call for layers, but you can certainly add them if you prefer. The next sheet shows the last three sketches, number 13 through 15. Sketch 13 uses papers B, C, D, and E laid out on several layers with a place for the sentiment between the pieces on the right side below the flower, but you can use any shape here. It doesn't have to be a flower. Now for cards 14, it uses pieces from papers E and F. The rectangle piece from paper E is angled slightly with another rectangle piece on top angled the other direction, and it calls for a little banner from paper F in the top right corner. And for card sketch 15, this calls for three pieces, two from papers D and F, that are the same size plus one from paper E, and these will be lined up as a strip on the left side. A big focal image will go to the right, and the back panel should be an embossed or stenciled layer, but you could also use pattern paper here. And the bottom part of this page includes instructions with some helpful hints like using larger mats or layers to cut out smaller mats that will be hidden behind the pattern paper to save on supplies, and also rotating or flipping the card sketches to make it work with your theme. You can adjust the size of the sentiments to meet your needs, and even add extra details and embellishments if you'd like. The card sketches really are just the starting point to get your creative juices flowing. The last paragraph explains how to enter the challenge to be eligible to win prizes. For a complete list of prizes you can win, visit kendrascardchallenges.com. The last page has a chart or quick reference guide to show what papers will need to be matched with others for each of the card sketches. This lets you know which papers are on each card sketch so you can better select your papers. If the papers don't look right together, you can always swap out the pattern paper pieces with solid card stock or other scraps of pattern paper that matches. This sheet also lists all of the company prize sponsors with links to their websites if you click on the links in the PDF file on your computer or phone. So if you're not familiar with some of these companies, I hope you will check them out and see what all they have to offer. On the right, it also explains my Patreon membership program and all of the benefits that you can receive if you join as a patron. Creating these challenges each quarter takes a lot of time, so joining as a patron helps to support my work and helps to keep the challenges free each quarter. So starting at just $5, you can receive a handmade card from me each month, plus access to a printer-friendly version of the challenge and access to previous archive challenges. For $10, as an all-access patron, you can receive everything I've already mentioned, plus early access to new card challenges, bonus printable files each month, and these can include digital sentiments, digital images, one sheet wonder files, card making tutorials, digital card making kits, and more. And for $25, VIP patrons receive additional benefits on top of what has already been mentioned. And these include a live crafty Zoom session with me each quarter and a card making kit that includes papers, card stock, die cuts or ephemera, and embellishments. These are shipped out at the beginning of the third month of each quarter. And there are a few additional benefits that I'm adding for patrons this time around. There will be a quarterly prize drawing available for patrons only. And I'm also creating another Facebook group specifically for all access and VIP patrons, where you will find resources for the bonus printables, additional instructions and bonus content, access to group chats and events. This new patron community will make it easier for me to communicate with everyone and offer help and support if you need it. For more information about my Patreon, you can scan the QR code on the printable or visit patreon.com forward slash Kendra's card challenges. I'll also have this listed in the description box below. 
Now I'll go ahead and show you the first set of cards I made while creating this challenge. I used the Cool Basics Paper Pad by Pink and Main. I'll place the card sketch in the corner and I'll also list the main products I use down in the description box below. While I show you these cards, I'll provide a little more details about entering the challenge. As mentioned before, you can download the free printable at kendrascardchallenges.com. You'll want to find the Facebook group called Kendra's Card Challenges and join that. You'll also find the link to the Facebook group in the description box below. In this group is where you'll upload your photo of all 15 cards to the appropriate photo album. There are different photo albums for each month during the quarter, and you'll need to include your name, state, and country of residence in the caption of the photo. This is for prize awarding purposes. Now, most of the prizes can be won by card makers worldwide, but there are some physical products that will need to be shipped. So in the event that the wheel picker selects an international winner for one of these prizes, the person winning will need to pay for the shipping costs. In the featured post at the top of the group, you'll find instructions on how to locate and post to the photo albums using both a computer and a mobile device. It's important that you post in the photo album so that I can locate your entry. Just posting your photo on the group wall does not count as an entry. There are also separate photo albums for each card sketch where you can share a photo of each card individually. Uploading individual card photos isn't a requirement to be entered to win one of the quarterly prizes, but this is how you enter to win one of the monthly sketch prizes. Plus, everyone can see the cards up close a little better. What's great about the individual albums is that you can post the pictures as you finish them throughout the quarter and still be eligible to win the sketch prizes, even if you don't get to finish all 15 cards throughout the quarter. You can officially enter the challenge up to three times, but only once per month. But please feel free to share all of your creations in the Facebook group if you decide to do more. If you're not on Facebook, you can upload your photo using the form linked on my website to officially enter the challenge. But please note that these entries will not be included in my monthly video showcase on YouTube. If you upload your creations to other social media platforms using the hashtags Kendra's Card Challenge 11 and KCC 11, others can see your creations and be inspired. So I hope you'll share your cards with us on your own Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, or YouTube. Hashtags allow you to search for cards made with the challenge on each of the platforms. So if you're looking for more examples or inspiration, this is a great resource. Now I'll show you the papers that I'm using for my second set of cards. I'm using the Warm Basics Paper Pad from Pink and Main. And these are the six sheets that I've assigned to each of the cutting templates. They all coordinate together. And I'll be using both sides of these papers for my cards. I like to select a few patterns that contain all of the colors in the color palette of the paper pad, so I know that I can tie the colors together with these patterns. So now I'll show you the best way for cutting the papers using these templates. Now, Before you get started, you'll want to have something to put the paper pieces in once you cut them to help keep you organized. I like to use cellophane sleeves that are numbered, but envelopes would also work, or even pre-cut card bases. Look for the scissors on the cutting template, and this indicates where you will cut first. For paper A, the cutting guide shows that the first cut will be at four and three quarter inches along the right side. Remember, if you have a directional pattern, you want to take into consideration the arrows, which show the direction that the piece will be facing on the card sketches. You'll need to decide which card you'll want to use the directional pattern paper on, and make sure you cut it correctly. So you'll first cut this at four and three quarter inches. And then next I'm going to take the strip on the right and turn it and cut it at one and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to cut this again and you'll end up with two squares that will go for sketch two. And then the remaining piece will be for sketch three and this will eventually be cut into a banner. And then the left piece will turn this and cut it at three and a half inches. This large piece will be for sketch one. And then what's left, there are a lot of different cuts for this bottom piece. So it's important that you make your next cut at one and a quarter inches horizontally rather than cutting those banners first since they're different widths. So after cutting at one and a quarter inches, turn that piece and cut at three and a half inches. And then you'll cut this square piece in, in half and these should each measure 5 eighths of an inch. And remember 4 eighths is the same as 1 half, so 5 eighths is slightly bigger than a half. 
And those two small pieces will eventually be cut into banners for sketch four and that bigger rectangle piece is for sketch three. So now for this bottom piece, you're going to cut off the banner piece on the right first. So cut at four and a quarter inches. This little piece will need to be trimmed down to one and one eighth of an inch in length and eventually it will be cut into a banner and this piece is for sketch six. Then on the piece that's left, you'll cut off the one quarter inch strip off of the bottom. And this will be for sketch seven. And that leaves a one inch strip for sketch five. And then this is what paper A looks like when it's all cut. So now I'm going to place all of the pieces into the numbered cellophane bags that correspond with each sketch. I won't do this for all of the papers in this video to save time but you definitely want to keep track of which pieces go with each card sketch, whether you use cellophane bags, envelopes, card bases, storage sleeves, or even containers. Now for the second sheet of paper, paper B, I'm going to go ahead and cut where the scissors indicate across the bottom. So I will cut at five inches to remove that one inch strip from the bottom. And then I will take this strip and turn it and cut at four and a quarter inches. And that will be for sketch five. And then you'll cut at five eighths of an inch, another banner for sketch four. And then the piece that's left, you'll need to cut at one and one eighths and trim off a small piece on the right. And that will be scraps. that you'll have a scrap and then the bigger piece will be for sketch 13. And then before turning the upper piece, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the one and one quarter inch strip off of the right side. And then I'm gonna take that strip and turn it and measure at one and a quarter inches to cut off the top square for card two and then the bigger piece will eventually be a banner for card three. Now the piece that's left will measure four and three quarters by five, and you'll wanna cut the top two inches off first. So turn it and cut at two inches. You'll see me turning this piece and measuring here to make sure that I'm cutting it along the right edge. But once you cut at two inches, you'll take this piece and turn it so that you can cut at three and a half inches and this piece will eventually be a tag and then the piece that's left you'll want to measure at one quarter inches for the other square or one and a quarter inches for the other square and that will be for card two and the small piece will be another banner for sketch six now the piece that's left is the section in the middle that is four and three quarter inches wide and so we want to turn it to cut off that quarter inch strip across the top and this will be for card number seven. And then next you'll want to cut the one and three quarter inch rectangle off of the piece that's left. And this piece should measure one and three quarter by two and three eighths. So you'll need to turn this piece and cut it two and three eighths, leaving a small strip, which will be scraps. For the piece that's left, it should measure three inches by two and three quarter inches. So you'll want to find the two and three quarter inch edge and cut at one inch. And this piece is for card 10. And what's left is for card nine. And we need to cut an eighth of an inch off the ends. So we'll measure and cut at two and seven eighths. And that piece will be scraps. And then we'll turn this piece and cut it in half at seven eighths of an inch. And both of these pieces will be for sketch nine. And this is what paper B should look like once it's all cut. Now to cut paper C. And my first cut will be at four inches. And then on the left piece, you'll turn and cut off the bottom strip at five and a quarter inches, leaving a three quarter inch piece for sketch 11. And the big piece is for card four. And then the strip on the right, you'll want to turn it, measure at five and a quarter inches, 
and cut, which will leave a three quarter inch piece that will be a banner for sketch six. And it should be one and three quarter inches in length. So you'll need to trim off a little bit. But the longer strip is for sketch 11. And then for what's left, you'll cut this in half so that you have two one inch strips. Then turn each of these strips and cut at four and a quarter inches. One strip will be for card five and the other for card 12. The remaining one inch squares will be for card 13. And this is what paper C should look like once it's all cut. Now for paper D, I'm going to make my first cut at four and a quarter inches. And the smaller right hand strip should measure one and three quarter inches once it's cut. And so we're going to take this strip and turn it and cut at two and a quarter inches. And that left hand piece will be for card 13. Then your next cut will be at two and three eighths of an inch. And this will be for sketch number eight. And what's left should measure one and three eighths. And this is for sketch 15. And it's correct. So. Now for that left piece, we're going to cut the one inch strip off the top first. And this is for card five. Next, you'll cut the two strips that should measure seven eighths. And that's for card nine. And these will need to measure four and one eighth of an inch. So you'll need to cut off one eighth of an inch off of the ends of both pieces. And the remaining piece should measure four and a quarter by three and a quarter. So make sure you're cutting on the longer four and a quarter inch side. You'll cut off the one inch strip on the right first. And then turn that piece and cut at three inches. And this will be for card 10. And then the, piece, the other piece should be three and a quarter inch square. You'll cut off one inch, which will be the piece you'll use to cut out a half circle, which is an optional piece for sketch four. Then with what's left, cut off a one inch strip from the longer edge, which will give you a piece for card six that measures one by two and a quarter, which will eventually become a banner. And the remaining piece should be a two and a quarter inch square for card 11. Now mine is slightly bigger, so I'm going to trim this up a little bit, but I probably cut my one inch strip a little too short, but this is what it should look like once it's cut. Now for this bottom piece, I'm going to use a two inch circle punch and line up the top of this piece in the top of my circle punch so that I can cut out a half circle. Remember this piece is optional for card four. So if you don't have a circle punch or a circle die, you don't have to use this piece. But this half circle, like I said, is for sketch four. For paper E, first you'll want to cut off a one inch strip from the bottom. And since this particular pattern for me is stripes, I want to make sure I turn it so that my stripes are facing a certain way for the cards I want to use the side of the paper on. So once you cut this strip off the bottom, then you'll cut at four and a quarter inches. The longer piece is for card five and the shorter piece is for card 15. Now for the top portion, you'll then cut off the half inch strip off of the end. So just make sure you're on the six inch side before you cut. And this strip is for card 11. Next, you'll turn it and cut off the one and a half inch strip, which will be for card 12. And what's left is the top portion and we'll cut off the two and three quarter inch piece for card 14. And then we'll take the remaining piece, turn it and cut off the one and one eighth of an inch banner piece for card six. Then what's left, make sure you're on the two and three quarter inch side and cut at one and three quarter inches. The bigger piece is for card eight and the one inch piece is for card 13. And this is what paper E should look like once it's all cut. Now for the last sheet, paper F, the first cut is the half inch piece on the far right. So measure at five and a half inches and make your cut. 
and then you will take the half inch strip and turn and cut at five inches. This will be for card six and the small piece will be a banner for card 14. And then you'll take the large piece and turn it and make sure you're on the six inch side and you'll cut at two and a quarter inches. And this piece is for card 14 and the top piece you'll cut at one and three quarter inches and then you will turn it and cut at two and three eighths of an inch and these two pieces are for cards 8 and 15 and then you should have a three and three quarter inch square left for card 12. And I'm just making sure that this is a good square and it is. So now that I have all of the papers cut, I'm going to sort all of the pieces into the cellophane bags and cut my layers from matching cardstock. All of the layers and extra pieces of cardstock that you'll need for your cards are marked with measurements on the card sketches. You can get creative and use different textures for any of the non-pattern paper pieces and strips. Use embossing folders or stencils for any plain panels or add ribbon or fun embellishments or ephemera. You don't have to keep it plain like it's shown on the sketch. Get creative, but use the sketches to cut all of your layers. I'll be sharing the cards I made with the Warm Basics paper pad at a later time here on my YouTube channel. So make sure you're a subscriber and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of my new uploads. I also want to mention that there will be a big giveaway video hop on July 2nd where each of the video design team members will be sharing the card making process for each of the 15 sketches in this challenge. And you'll have a chance to win a goodie bag filled with card making supplies valued at over $100. I hope you'll hop along with us to get some wonderful ideas and tips for Challenge 11 and have a chance to win. In addition, I'd like to announce that I now have a new inspiration team, and these are the talented creators who will be sharing projects to show how Kendra's Card Challenge sketches can be used beyond the challenge in everyday card making, scrapbooking, tags, home decor, and more. They will be posting on a variety of social media platforms throughout the quarter. So I hope you'll click on the link to my design team member page and I'll have this listed in the description box below. Here you will find a list of all of the members links for both the video team and the inspiration team. I hope you'll follow them to find additional card making inspiration. We will also be doing Instagram hops several times each month throughout the quarter where you can have a chance to win even more prizes. These hops will showcase creations made with products from some of the Kendra's Card Challenge's prize sponsors and the card sketches from Challenge 11. The first Instagram hop will be on July 5th. These opportunities will be posted in the Kendra's Card Challenge's Facebook group. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure you join and turn on notifications with, within the group on Facebook. Now let's talk about the amazing prizes you can win for Kendra's Card Challenge number 11. We have 20 company prize sponsors this quarter with prizes totaling more than $1,000. The sponsors for this challenge are Altenew, Artful Angel, Catherine Pooler Designs, Colorado Craft Company, Crafty Meraki, Gina K Designs, Cat Scrappiness, Craft and Kimmy, Lawn Fawn, Not Too Shabby Shop, Pear Blossom Press, Pink and Main, Polka Doodles, Prickly Pear Stamps, Scrappy Tails Crafts, Sweet November Stamps, This Calls for Confetti, TLC Designs, Uniquely Creative, and Whimsy Stamps. You can see the full list of prizes on my website. Now I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the Kendra's Card Challenges patrons shown here. I really appreciate your generosity and support. It really means a lot to me. I hope you enjoy your handmade cards each month and the other benefits that you receive as a patron. Remember you have until September 30th of 2023 to create your cards and get them posted to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group or uploaded to the form. If you're watching this video after September 30th of 2023, you can access the printable through my spring store or you can download all of the archived printables through my Patreon page as an all access or VIP patron. If you think you might give this challenge a try, leave me a comment. 
I'd also love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and share this challenge with any of your crafty friends who might enjoy it. If you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel already, thank you for your continued support. If you're not, I hope you'll subscribe and join us on challenge number 11. Don't forget to check out the YouTube KCC11 giveaway hop that starts July 2nd and the Instagram hop that starts on July 5th for more chances to win prizes. I appreciate you watching this video. I can't wait to see what you create and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.